A group of activists from Phoenix, Arizona, organized a bus trip for undocumented voluntaries as part of a wider campaign called No Papers, No Fear, trying to bring the drama of undocumented people's life to the public attention and trying to empower the Latino community. Last year, they toured parts of the Midwest and the Southwest Coast, all the way to Charleston, North Carolina, where after 20 cities on 10 states, the first chapter of the trip ended. The bus is now headed to California, touring the West Coast. The purpose was to like gather as, as many people possible, you know, that they have like open cases or like just regular people that, you know, they risk arrest every day just by going out on the street, you know, to drop off their kids or going to get groceries or whatever. So we just wanted to show that for a lot of people was uh, like, they saw it as something really risky just to get on a bus and, you know, open, openly say that we were undocumented and travel cross country. But it's something that we do every day, you know, we, we, we're under that risk. A positive outcome from the battle for undocumented people's rights here in Phoenix, Arizona, is a sizable Latino rights movement composed by people from different backgrounds. Many of them gather together to paint their bus and got it ready to go. This bus stands for not being afraid and for, and for being proud of who you are and, and for seeing the beauty in, in the lives of the people who are told that they're undocumented so they must be in the shadows. The, the bus is, is, is supposed to carry that message that no, you, you don't have to be in the shadows. In reality, there is nothing, nothing to fear to come out and say you know, openly that you're undocumented because you're still under the same risk you know, of getting arrested or getting pulled over, not having an ID. On August the 1st, 2012, under a full moon, they hit the road and drove north for about 12 hours, from Phoenix to Denver. Once in Colorado, the first stop of the trip, the activists met with local Latino rights organizations and discussed strategies to unite and coordinate efforts. I play a supportive role when they do civil disobedience. I, we do a lot of the chanting and stuff, so we get people's energy up, and everybody, everybody did a great job. And I don't have any children, but, you know, I see so many faces. I see so many kids out there who are, they're, they're hurting. Even today at our action, is so many broken people. You know, they might arrest one person, but the family outside is suffering. You know, the person inside is suffering. People are committing suicide. And a lot of private prisons, people are investing in our incarceration. And to me, that just blows my mind. The next day, on August the 3rd, they arrive to Albuquerque, New Mexico, and meet with local Native American and Latino activists to interchange experience and widen the network of activists and local organizations. After a night of travel, they demonstrated in Travis County, Texas, where 50 local activists show support for the undocumented. They called on the local sheriff, Greg Hamilton, to stop participating in a program that detains and deports illegal immigrants. Their mothers, their fathers, their day laborers, their workers, their students, and they're drawing inspiration from the undocumented youth movement that has led the country forward. And throughout the country, the purpose of the writers is not only to overcome their fear, but to also pose a moral dilemma to sheriffs like Sheriff Hamilton, who claims he has no choice, but he does have a choice. And the writers are coming to Austin to pose that moral dilemma and have the sheriff stand on the right side of history, to have the sheriff stand with the writers and stand with the community. And that's why they've come so far. Many miles and cities down the road, the undocumented visited New Orleans to talk about and understand the natural and humanitarian disaster that was Hurricane Katrina. Knock these buildings down. This there they learn the, about an agreement the between the Black million. Stand with Dignity now, and Latino like, Congreso you know, de Jornaleros the, the coalitions. This union of coalitions was created to heal tensions between the two communities. You was talking about the border from this Mexico to, to the United States. Here's a border from my street, from one side of the street to the next street. That is the border right there. I can't even cross across the street. Al estar primeramente en un barrio donde se está dividiendo por una sola calle, me sentí como si estuviera en la frontera donde consideran ilegales a unos uh, y ilegales a otros. On August the 18th in Alabama, they demonstrated outside the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights. The undocumented activists or writers, as they call themselves, interrupted a testimony by Chris Kovac, one of the SB 1070 authors. 
who had been invited to speak about the impact of that law. The, civil, the Federal Civil Rights Commission is having a, an audience, a hearing, and they're in, inviting really racist people like Chris Kobach, like Dan Stein, like Mike Krikori, and people that hide behind the face of a business suit, but they're still really racist people. They're still the clan, it's just that they're wearing a suit. He was invited because on 2012, Alabama followed the example of Arizona and enacted a very similar law, HB 56. <laughs> We love this country. We can share. We can. We can share with you. But we can live with the lion. We are in the common. But we are human, no animal. On part two of this report, we will ride with the undocumented activists all the way to North Carolina in their quest to empower community as a response to the criminalization of undocumented people. Reporting for the Real News, this is Oscar Leon.